meet Betty. She lives by herself, but for the last few months, she hasn't been alone. LQ, tell me a joke. Did you hear about the claustrophobic astronaut? No. Apparently, he just needed a little space. <laughs> Most technology isn't made for 93-year-olds. But this woman is making sure that this particular robot is. LQ, who are you? She's researching the way we interact with machines. And if she has her way, robots will soon be a trusty companion for all of us. My name is Ellie Q. How can I help you? As technology replaces old jobs, it's also creating new ones. I'm Aki Ito, and I'm here to show you the jobs of the future. My name is Danielle Ishak, and I am a human-robot interaction researcher. It's really hard to intuitively design a robot meant for a consumer audience. You have to make sure that it's a robot that people want, people know how to use, and people value. Danielle works for an Israeli startup called Intuition Robotics. Its U.S. office is here in downtown San Francisco. Hello? Hey, Danielle, it's Aki. Come on in. The company is funded by a couple big names, like Samsung and Toyota. Full disclosure, Bloomberg's venture capital arm is an investor, too. This is Ellie Q. Can I take her out for a spin? Please. Ellie Q. Tell me what you can do. I am a proactive social robot designed for older adults. I can connect you to your family and friends, and even play music. These features might remind you of the Amazon Echo, but you'd be missing the point if you compared her to a smart speaker. She's not meant to just be useful. She's meant to be a companion. Why don't you take a break and have a drink? And that's why she has a head that can nod and make other subtle gestures you might expect from a pet. Through our research with older adults, we're finding that almost on a daily basis, we see that somebody tells her that they love her. Really? Or that they like her. Like, or that they miss literally, her. Literally, I love you? Mm -hmm. They'll also tell her, I'm depressed or I'm lonely. They'll open up to her in a way that they might not necessarily open up to a human because they don't feel like they'll be judged. LEQ isn't on sale yet. But a prototype is already in the homes of about a dozen early testers who live in the Bay Area. LEQ, tell me what the weather is today. Danielle's job is to figure out what's working and what's not. Sorry, please rephrase your request. And she does that by visiting each of her testers twice a month. They're critical. We're building a product for people who we are not. I'm not a senior, and how could you know how to design for somebody if you don't do research? Because otherwise, you would just be designing in the dark. Jobs like Danielle's are just starting to emerge. Until recently, robots were mostly in factories, separated from humans. But now, they're finally getting cheap enough, small enough, and smart enough to be in our homes. This has created a whole new challenge of designing robots that people will actually want to interact with. And that's where Danielle comes in. Her research has helped shape every little facet of LEQ, from the way LEQ moves to the way she talks. It's a very special job, and it can be really hard, and it can be really frustrating, but at the end of the day, it's incredibly rewarding. And I think the most rewarding part about it is when I see the joy on the users' faces, like that they saw their feedback turned into something real. Today, 
Today, we've driven east of San Francisco to go see one of Danielle's research participants. LQ, tell me something interesting. Did you know that Ronald Reagan was a lifeguard in high school and saved 77 people's lives? Now see, this is where a conversation is. She should open up and I should say, no, I did not know that. I expect her to be able to continue a conversation for at least a couple of comments. Yeah, and why is that? Why? Yeah. Because that's companionship. When Betty was around Danielle's age, she was working with some of history's very first computers. When I was finishing up my master's degree, I was working at Harvard in the computer lab when they were building Mark IV. A large room-sized computer, but now this artificial intelligence stuff is amazing. LQ? Yes? Schedule a doctor's appointment. No problem. I'm working on it. When Danielle brought along the idea of working with robotics for the elderly, I said, are you kidding me? Will older people connect to a robot? And she said, I don't know. Let's research and find out. <laughs> Danielle grew up here in this suburb of Atlanta. Her parents spent much of their childhoods in Israel and met in the U.S. We as immigrants, we understood that we might need to work a little harder. In fact, I feel that rather than taken away from Danielle, it gave her so much more because she understood the fact that you need to run after your dreams and work really hard no matter what the challenges are. School didn't come easily for Danielle. I have dyslexia, and that very much affected my self-esteem academically. The principal of the school did not recommend her to take advanced classes. She fought for it, and she got into it, and she did very well with them, too. Danielle's first job out of grad school was at X the secretive research facility founded by Google. It's known for dreaming up all kinds of wacky, far-flung ideas. Can you tell us about the moonshots you worked on? <laughs> no, I can't tell you too much about the projects that I worked on. I can't say that I was working on robotics. She loved the job, but wanted to work on something that would reach real consumers sooner. So she left X after a year and joined Intuition Robotics. She's been working in the field for four years now, and it took her a while to find her footing in a male-dominated industry. I've gone to different meetups where there'll be like a circle of men with their like zip-up jacket with their like company logo on it and a beer in their hand. And I'll come in with lipstick and nobody wants to talk to me. This is my closet. So at first she did her best to fit in wearing a pair of glasses she didn't need, and toning down her style. So what's the kind of thing you used to wear to a conference? Stuff like this, blousey things that make you look like you're 40. <laughs> <laughs> but that got old after a while. And what's the kind of thing you wear now? Now it's like I just enjoy being kind of expressive and playful in what I wear. Before we wrap up for the day, Danielle has one more LEQ tester to visit. Joseph is 97. And he's had the robot in his home for eight months. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good. <laughs> How has Miss Ellie Q been? She always tells me to take a drink of water <laughs> at least four times a day. So we added a whole bunch of new uh -huh. facts to Ellie Q. 
Did you know that a cup of chopped red bell pepper contains more vitamin C than an orange? Okay. What did you think of that? Certainly the, the uh, print was, I could see that okay. quite clearly. What about this? Well, I can see that. Ella Q, play music. No problem. It will begin shortly. By 2050, almost half a billion people are going to be 80 or older. And if current trends continue, more and more are going to be like Joseph and Betty, living alone. Ella Q, stop. Today, both of them are doing okay. But some of Danielle's other participants have been struggling. Is it kind of hard to leave them at the end of the day? It is. Some of our testers are pretty advanced in the stages of depression through loneliness and isolation. And at times, I know that LQ is cheering them up in their day, mm -hmm. but I know that it's only part of the way. No source of artificial intelligence robots will ever be able to replace humans mm -hmm. and human companionship or human care. The key to Danielle's work is to embrace that very limitation of machines. Robots should help humans do what they love, help humans interact with more humans, help humans in general. Not pull humans away from humans, not take humans' jobs and leave humans without purpose. Whether it's in our workplaces or in our homes, robots are soon gonna be everywhere. And it's up to Danielle to make sure this robot-filled future leaves us just a little better off. So don't be afraid. And if you are afraid, come and join us. Because I promise it's a friendly place. <laughs>